Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at iCloud. So when you upgraded to Mac OS X line 10.7.2, you had the chance to establish an iCloud account. And the same with iOS 5. On the Mac it's under System Preferences, there's a special iCloud control panel. And on iOS it's in Settings under iCloud. So in System Preferences you go to iCloud. And in there you see all the different categories of things that you can use with iCloud. Now you could say that each one of these represents something you sync between your Macs and your iOS devices. But in truth it's not really syncing. It's all about having these on the server and being able to access them from multiple devices. So for instance Mail and Notes that applies to your me.com email address that you can have for free with an iCloud account. Uh, you've got your contacts and calendars and bookmarks. Uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, before you would think of those as syncing. But iCloud is going to keep those on the server and then you have access to them. So basically it's the same set say, of bookmarks or events or contacts that you share between all your devices where you have iCloud enabled. PhotoStream is a special feature where you can take photos using your iOS device and they will appear automatically inside of iPhoto. You have to enable that here and also inside of iPhoto. Documents and data refers to sharing documents from pages, numbers, and iWork between your iOS devices. It doesn't yet do anything for the Mac. You don't actually get those uh, documents on your Mac. And I'll show you more later. Back to my Mac uh, is the same as the Mobile Me functionality where you can easily use screen sharing from outside of your home. And Find My Mac is the ability to locate a Mac uh, kind of in the same way you could find my iPhone. Um, if you lost it or somebody stole a portable Mac then you can try to find it on a map. And here you can click on the Manage button here to manage your storage options for iCloud. So here I am in iCal and I've got iCal for today brought up and I've got my iPad and both of these are logged into the same iCloud account. So I'm going to create a new event here for later today. I'm just going to call it Test and I've done that now on my iPad it's there. Uh, now I'm going to just look here on my Mac and you'll see in a few seconds it will appear here on my Mac as well. And there it is. The same will happen for contacts and for bookmarks. I create one on one device whether it's the Mac, the iPad, my iPhone. If they're all using the same iCloud account it will sync across all devices. The real data is stored on the server in the iCloud servers and I'm actually accessing it on all of my different devices. It's the same thing when you look at a web page, right? The web page is not really on your computer. It's on a server somewhere. You're looking at macmost.com or apple.com and many people can be looking at it on different computers and devices around the world. This is kind of your own private little internet where you've got contacts, events, bookmarks, and all sorts of other data that's stored in your iCloud account and you can access it on all the devices. So when an iPhone or iPad you of course need to be running iOS 5 and your controls for iCloud are under Settings and it's right there labeled iCloud. So here are all the on off switches. It's basically the same as on the Mac. Uh, you might want to look under Documents and Data. You can turn off the using cellular for syncing documents and data which could be useful if you pay a lot for uh, mobile bandwidth. So here I am in Pages on my iPhone and when you start off it shows you the Getting Started document. Now just to show you how iCloud works here I'm going to create a new document on my iPad which you can't see. I'm going to create a blank document and just type some text and then I'm going to return to the Documents page and I can see on the iPad that it is uploading. Uh, there's a blue progress bar and then there is it appears instantly on my iPhone and I've got access to it and I can open it there. If I were to edit it here on my iPhone I would then see the changes reflected there on my iPad the next time I open that document. But you can access your documents on your Mac. I've gone into iCloud.com and here I'm going to click on iWork and I have Keynote pages and numbers and pages selected and there's that document that is on my iOS devices. I can select it you can see I have download options and I can choose to download as a pages document. So that's how I can get it onto my Mac without too much trouble. In addition, if I look at the other side of this window, there's a settings button here. And I've got the ability to upload a document. So I could actually take a pages document, upload it to iCloud this way on my Mac, and then have access to it on my iOS devices. 
Now I gotta believe that Apple's working on a way to make this a little easier. Perhaps an update to Pages, Numbers, and Keynote on the Mac that will allow you to open up iCloud documents and save them directly from those applications. In future episodes I'll be looking at some of the other features of iCloud such as Photo Stream and Find My Friends. Until next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.